This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Perhaps a little bit of a provocative title for today's video, Five Things That Leo Fender Got Wrong. Um, I was in a playful mood, basically, and in my defence, these are all things that Fender have looked at over the years and thought, you know what, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. So let's see what it is that I'm actually talking about. The wrong number of frets. Yeah, 21 frets. Um, I don't get it. I don't see why um, having a, a range of notes on the instrument that goes up to a high C sharp is a sensible thing on an instrument where essentially you're tuned to the key of G major. All instruments have keys that they are more or, more or less comfortable playing in. If you've ever played in a band with a sax player, you'll know that they always want to play in keys that us guitarists find quite awkward. The key of G major, um, well, why, why am I associating that with a guitar? Well, look at the open strings that the guitar's tuned to. Um, e, A, D, G, B, E, that's a G major or E minor pentatonic. And... You know, if you were thinking about what should the extended range of this instrument be, you know, given the fact that it's probably going to be playing in keys like G major and it's related keys like D and C and, and so on a lot of the time, why would you think having the, the highest note on the instrument being a C sharp, the 21st fret on the high E string, why would you think that was a good idea? Why not just take it to a D note? That's a note that's in key. That means that any run that needs to kind of ascend and uh, resolve to a high point on a scale, you can actually complete that run. Um, whereas if you've got a C sharp at the top end, that is possibly the wrongest of wrong notes um, in the key of G because it's your tritone, it's your flattened fifth, the, the most dissonant interval imaginable. I understand that some people don't like 22 fret neck guitars. Um, well, don't use the 22nd fret then. Um, it's there if you need it, but if you don't want to use it, you know, it's, um, it's not like you're going to... Uh, it's, you, that it's going to kind of affect the tuning or or the tonality of the guitar. You know, on a, on a 24 fret guitar, you know, the, it, it kind of pushes the neck pickup out of its not normal position, so it never quite sounds like a proper neck pickup. Well, a 22nd fret on a on a Fender style guitar doesn't do that. So I just don't understand what the objection is to having 22 frets, and I don't understand the logic of only having 21, given the limitation it places on you. So there you go. Next, the fretboard radius. Yes, yeah, seven and a quarter inch fretboard radius. That one again is a mystery to me. Um, I'm fully aware that there are plenty of great players who have uh, a low action and manage to do kind of uh, good, kind of big string bends. David Gilmore, for instance, on a vintage uh, Fender fretboard radius. Um, but all I can say is that on any guitar I've ever had with that seven and a quarter inch radius, it's always been more prone to fret buzz and choking out and everything. It's it's like it's less tolerant if you've got any kind of fret wear or anything like that. It's just you know it 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 makes it um, you know kind of more difficult to kind of do this kind of big string bends on on a low action easily, um, and I just don't get what the whole what you gain by having that that kind of heavily cambered fretboard um the, the the thing that people come out with is that oh it makes playing uh cowboy chords down at the open position much easier well why don't martin guitars have that fretboard radius then why do martin gu guitars um you know acoustic guitars where you're going to be spending a lot of time down in that part of the neck why don't they have a seven and a quarter inch fretboard radius why do they opt for 12 inch radius then i just don't see what it brings to the party other than you know making your guitar potentially more difficult to play with a low action if you like doing big string bends so there you go next where the truss rod is yeah where the truss rod is on vintage fenders you've basically got to pretty much disassemble the guitar to adjust the truss rod which is let's face it a routine bit of maintenance and kind of um some, something i do on most of my guitars two or three times a year as the seasons change and the weather changes and the neck needs to the neck relief needs to be adjusted a little bit um you know it's it's not something you need to do every week but it's not something you need to do once and forget about it either it is something that needs doing on a regular basis and if you're gonna if that's something that's going to be the case then 
why make it so you've got to disassemble the guitar pretty much in order to carry that out? Gibson knew this back in the 50s, you know, so why didn't Fender? Gibson always put their, their truss rod adjustment in an accessible place up at the headstock. On a Fender guitar, slack it, you know, kind of essentially take the neck off, guess how much adjustment needs to be put in, put it all back together again, tune up, see if you were right, and if, if so, good, but if not, do it all again. I don't get it. Um... So there you go. Next. The Strat sound is missing. Yeah, the quintessential Strat sound, the bridge and middle pickups, the neck and middle pickups. Um, you know, in 1954, the Stratocaster first came out and players started experimenting, kind of wedging the three-way switch in between the, the you know, the, the, the different pickup settings and found it had this fantastic tone. And Fender responded to this nearly a quarter of a century later by giving you a five-way switch you know i mean why did it take from 1954 to 1977 for you know a strat to come with a strat sound that sound that you know that kind of kind of quacky out of phase so-called sound why did it take nearly a quarter of a century for fender to ship uh, their guitars with that sound as standard i don't get it next no tone pot for the pickup that most needs it yeah, for me, the um, the one weak point on a Strat when I'm playing it, that's all I'm saying, when other people play it, they can kind of make it sound heavenly, but I just don't like when I'm playing the uh, the bridge single coil pickup on a Strat. It's why if I do that, you'll see my main Strat style guitar behind me, the wonderful Larry Carlton S7 guitar has a humbucker in the bridge, um, something that just needs that little bit more uh, grunt, I find. And you it still sounds like a strat um in the um in the quacky sort of in between positions so um but just something to tame the the for me that the kind of thinness and harshness and um the kind of brittleness of the bridge pickup it just I, I, it just needs something there to kind of roll that kind of treble off um you don't frankly need a treble roll off on the neck pickup you don't need a treble roll off on the uh, on the middle pickup but you do as sure as eggs is eggs need it on the bridge pickup and it's like okay the, the pickup that most needs a tone pot isn't getting one i don't understand why that was the case but it is and players have been kind of uh, modifying the guitars to uh, wire the tone control into the bridge pickup um you know for many many a year now and so you know fender is starting to offer that as as an option i think is it standard on some fender guitars um it should have been for a long long time so there you go those are the five things that in my opinion and this is just my opinion uh, that leo fender got wrong make of it what you will um this is bound to get uh, quite heated in the comment section i imagine but there you go um, I've got a thick skin and that is the video for today folks hope you found it um, in well informative I guess you have probably haven't but entertaining in some small way at least and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like while you're at it don't forget the live stream every Friday 5 p.m UK time we drink beer and talk about music and guitars a great way to kick off the weekend and I'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now